Mississippi. We're coming to you live from the Element Wealth Studio. Uh, are you thinking about or planning for retirement? Do you have a plan? Go to myelementwealth.com or call 601-957-6006. Let Element Wealth help you find your balance between income, growth, and guarantee. Well, with us uh, on the line is Paige Roberts, the president and CEO of the Jackson County Chamber of Commerce. How are you doing, Paige? I'm doing well. Thanks, Lucian. Appreciate your taking the time to be with us. Oh, of course. My pleasure. Uh, how are things in Jackson County today? Oh, well, they're very good. They're very warm. Um, but uh, coming after a great holiday weekend and a time to reset and respect our veterans, um, we're hard at it. Uh, have a board meeting this afternoon, actually. Well, that's great. Well, you, you wrote, a, as you do, an opinion piece for uh, supertalk.fm that talked a little bit about uh, mental health awareness. You, you want to tell us a little bit about uh, what you were saying there and what your thoughts are? Sure. Well, as um, Super Talk has been very good about getting out to their listeners, the information about May being National Mental Health Awareness Month, it is a time for all of us in the country to sit back and reflect about what our own uh, state of mental health might be where where we are where our loved ones are um, people within our spheres of influence paying special attention to ways to um, improve our emotional well-being as well as remove the stigma that can be so um, tightly wrapped around mental health it does feel like that's a real change in the way people talk about mental health. I know there's still work to be done, but as recently as 20 years ago, I think people thought of mental health issues as being a personal failure as opposed to something that, that ought to be addressed with, with more of a, a, a health approach as opposed to a, a sort of personal criticism approach. Yes, and for some people it was 20 minutes ago <laughs> that they <laughs> that they still have a, a stigma wrapped around it. Um, sometimes it can be cultural, it can be gender based, it can just be something that's uh, used something you're used to in the culture of your family, um, whether you embrace it or whether you stiff arm it. Um, but yes, yeah, so the piece that I wrote was really based on my own 30 years on the proverbial couches of uh, professionally licensed therapists, as well as the offices of my pastors. And, and a specific week I spent at a program called OnSite that's in Tennessee, just a little bit west of Nashville, that was um, uh, significant for my own emotional well-being and talked about um, different tips in the piece or really different um, uh, I guess, um, tools, if you will, that help me get through the day. So much of our emotional well-being is tied to cognitive therapy and what we think and what we put into our minds is what goes directly to our hearts and spirits. And, and that is um, how, how we end up with either emotional well-being or unwell-being. And what are some of those tips, if, if ways to deal with? Uh, well, let's start with what where some of the problems come from. I mean, what the you talk a little bit in your piece about perfectionism being one of the things you you deal with that causes, uh, I think, some anxiety and other issues. I mean, where where do a lot of these things come from for people? Well, so, sometimes we're just born with them. A lot of times it is the, our environment, but there becomes something, especially in females, where we feel that we have to be perfect and that if we're not, then we're a disappointment and that there are, like you said, it can be anxiety, it can be depression, um, any any type of fear uh, about not being perfect. And as we know, perfectionism is really a, a, uh, a 
a quest in insanity, if you will, because there is no such thing as being perfect. We're, we're all flawed. But what happens, I think, is we get a false narrative that starts playing in a loop in our minds about all the things um, that are wrong with us. And then that starts feeding um, more thoughts and it becomes sort of an avalanche of um, negative feelings and negative thoughts that aren't necessarily based and really rooted in evidence. And that's one of the things that I mention in the tools that you can use um, uh, in your thought process, that if you just take a moment first and just breathe, a lot of times we're just holding our breath or clenching our jaws and we don't even realize it. If we just breathe and we think about it's called what's doing a scan and we just sort of scan how we're feeling, how we're feeling physically, how we're feeling emotionally, and we just accept it and let it be. A lot of times we struggle with letting it go, but I had a therapist tell me once, just let it be. And of course, I think I mentioned in the article that <laughs> Paul McCartney could have been a psychologist <laughs> with, with um, <laughs> words like that, but just let it be. And being able to recognize our feelings and our emotions for what they are, and then sort of re-regulate to move forward. Um, I think I think our phones and our technology and the pace at which we're living our lives are causing us a lot of anxiety and it's uh, causing us to do a lot of comparison. And um, there's a great saying, comparison is the thief of joy. And I think, as I mentioned in the piece, social media is a den of thieves. <laughs> Uh, there's no doubt about it. And you think about it, especially with, with, I mean, I think people, older folks deal with it as well, but you think about children too, you, social media, the sort of constant comparisons to one another, knowing when they're being left out in a way that, you know, when we were kids, if you didn't get invited to the party, you probably didn't know about it as opposed to sitting at home on Friday night, looking at Instagram and seeing uh, evidence that you were not one of the cool kids, which can't be good for anybody's mental health. Right. And I think what's important is that when that happens to our children, because inevitably it's going to, and quite frankly, it happens to us as adults also, right? I've been on social media and seen that someone's had a birthday party that I would have thought I would have been invited to, but, but wasn't. I think we've all been there at some point. That's right. <laughs> yes. And so how do we deal with it? It's not about preventing bad things from happening to us or hurtful things from happening to us, but how do we deal with them? And, and what are the thought processes that we go through or or perhaps even the physical processes, you know, that's why exercise is considered so important or simply taking a, a walk and, and preferably outside. There's so much um, that can be done. Uh, I practice yoga. That can be something that helps you with being mindful and um calm or, or being uh, more attentive to your breath. I like to read books uh, that talk about this. I mentioned those in the article on supertalk.com as well. Um, books like The Confidence Code that that speaks directly to women and, and how the amygdala in our brain actually controls our emotions. And in men and women, it is shaped and sized differently. And so it is not our imagination imagination that males and females um, work with confidence or experience confidence or, or confidence manifests differently in the different genders. Um, so it's important, I think, to be knowledgeable and then to put things in practice that you're comfortable with. I think that makes perfect sense. Um... And it's it, it is such a good thing, and, and you're right. I'm glad that uh, that Super Talk has been bringing more awareness to Mental Health Awareness Month because destigmatizing 
these sorts of things seems to me to be so important so people actually will will get the help they need. Paige, do you have, we're coming up on a break. You have time for one more segment with us? Sure, of course. Thank you. Well, that sounds great. Uh, we'll be back with more uh, with Paige Roberts after this break. This is Lucian Smith in for Gerard Gibbard on Middays, coming to you live from the Element Wealth Studios. Middays on Super Talk Mississippi, coming to you live uh, with Paige Roberts from the Element Wealth Studio. Paige, you wrote a piece we were talking about before the break on that people can find at supertalk.fm about uh, mental health here and as we get towards the end of Mental Health Awareness Month. And, you know, one of the things you talk about is uh, that if if essentially is that people should feel comfortable taking medicine if that's what their doctor thinks is the best way to address uh, a, a mental health issue. If you want to maybe elaborate a little bit more on that. Sure. Um, I had been uh, working with a therapist for some time um, and he had suggested talking to my physician about getting on an antidepressant and I I really pushed back and said I don't I don't want to really um, greatly alter my state of thinking or feeling. And he said, that's not what it does. It really just sort of takes the edge off. And so I went to my physician and um, tried one of the uh, antidepressants very commonly uh, prescribed called Lexapro. And um, and I've been on it ever since because what I learned was that serotonin, which is the chemical in our brain that basically is about happiness or or um, well-being, sometimes isn't fully there when it needs to be. And that the drugs like Lexapro and Wellbutrin and some of the others can um, make a difference and kind of fill in in the same way that my body doesn't make as much of the thyroid stimulating hormone and I take uh, Synthroid for that every day. It's very, it's very similar. You know, I, I wanted to mention too to you, Lucian, that the reason why the chamber, our Jackson County Chamber, is focusing so specifically on mental health as one of our uh, issues is because it's so very clear now that it's impacting all of our areas of being like the workplace. The a couple months ago, we hosted our education page. Did we did we lose her there, Rhino? I think we may have lost you, Paige. Um, but if we get her back, uh, we'll we'll put her back on. I. I you know, one, the point that I think she makes that's so valuable in all this, you know, mental health, and I don't have the statistics at hand. I bet you Paige knows them off the top of her head. But the number of people who are affected by some sort of uh, mental health issue, whether it's anxiety or depression or uh, substance abuse uh, disorders, is really staggering. But people have been, and I think it's the reason that we have this Mental Health Awareness Month and the reason that it's being promoted so heavily, it is because people don't talk about it. I think all too often you have people who would benefit mightily from some form of treatment, but they're afraid to seek it out because there's there still is so much stigma around mental health. And I think people still tend to view themselves as too many people think of mental health as being a, a personal failure if you're suffering from depression or anxiety and that you just need to tough it out and get over it. And and so often that's not the case. Uh, and I've seen people, friends and family who've, uh, who've benefited immensely from seeking out somebody uh, who was able to help them work through an issue and, and get past it. But too many people uh, are afraid to do it because there is such a stigma associated with it. And so I think people like uh, Paige who are willing to talk about their own experiences, uh, to talk about their own struggles and what they've done uh, and, and how that has positively affected their lives. It really is just a, it's a tremendous, tremendous thing. Paige, we got you back there. Yes. I am so sorry. Uh, technical that, difficulties. Yes. What I was saying. I know the feeling. 
Yeah, <laughs> what I was saying was that the chamber hosted its annual education business summit, where we bring educators and employers into the room together to talk about particular issues and how they're affecting each group, the educators and the employers. And what we found in this uh, particular meeting around mental health, two commonalities. One was conflict resolution. We are not as a people very good at resolving conflict in a healthy manner anymore. And there is everyone from the HR directors at the large industrial employers to the small mom and pops having issues with conflict resolution, as are the educators with the students, the parents, the faculty. And the other commonality was resiliency and how we don't seem to have the capacity as much anymore to let things roll off our backs. So what we're doing is um, next week we're hosting the Summer Learning Summit with a local health psychologist who will have some uh, tips and tools for us um, to help in our workplaces, in our families, in our schools, so that we can build better resilience and we can learn how to resolve conflict in a more healthy fashion. Paige, thank you for coming on and talking about this and for all y'all are doing. This is Lucian Smith. Coming up next is Fox News, followed by Super Talk Mississippi News. 